Hi everyone, and welcome to this Valkyrie Sound tutorial on creating adaptive music zones. While there's no recognized definition for the phrase adaptive music or adaptive audio, my simplest take on this is that the audio is influenced in some way by the player's actions in the game. This could be a very simple setup, such as the way music changes as you move across the world map in Super Mario Bros. U. It could be the shift from exploration music into combat music in FDL, Faster Than Light. Or it could be musical stings wow, triggered when the player interacts with certain game objects, like an Uncharted 4. Sam, check it out. It's Avery's ship. <laughs> the fancy. Yeah, attacking the guns away. That's how it all started. Avery and two holding court over their cap. The more systems you have in your game, the more things you can then plug into the audio to change instrument tracks, mood, and to highlight things to the player. In Dead Space 3, Isaac's fear is tracked in the game. This in turn changes the audio so the player gets scared as well. As Isaac's fear factor goes up, his breathing gets louder, his heartbeat starts to race, the music gets louder. And afterwards, as that parameter reaches zero, the music settles, and those physiological responses settle as well, and you feel like you as the player have survived the experience with Isaac the character. The wide-ranging ability of adaptive audio to improve the player's experience is huge, it's phenomenal. This is a key difference between audio in films and audio in games. In this tutorial, we'll create an audio blueprint template that we can then place in a level to create different musical zones. We'll add a variable so we can set the music for each zone and keep everything in time so the music transitions smoothly from one zone to the next. First, we need some music, or you can use the music that I made by downloading it using the link below. So this is my Cubase project. I've got three sections. We've got the melody, the harmony, and the drums. And within each section, you can see that I've got multiple instruments. All of these are the same. All of the melodies are the same. All of the harmonies are the same. With the exception of this one, which is going to act as a base for all of the music. We're going to keep the same song all the way through, but we're going to change which instruments are playing, depending on which area of the map we're in. If you're good at writing your own music, my advice for this tutorial is just to keep things simple. You can always go back and complexify the sheer hell out of whatever it is that you've created. But for now, keep it simple because it's going to make it easier for us to manipulate the sounds in Unreal. Because I'm looping the tracks, I've added a fade out at the very end to reduce any clipping. So I recommend mixing the music before you export it. If you are using a program like Cubase, try and do your mixing within that program because that'll make it a lot easier when you come to import and use the files in the game engine. When you're exporting, make sure you export one instrument track at a time. That's going to allow you full flexibility in controlling how we use the sounds in the engine. Once you've exported your WAVs, import them into Unreal Engine by clicking and dragging them. Next, we're going to create a new sound queue. And we do that by right-clicking in the content browser, going to Sounds, and then Sound Queue. I've created a queue for each of the map areas. We've got Calamity Beach, Dragon Pass Mountain, Fire Forest, Mountain Forest, and Village. I've added the WAVs that I want in these locations to their respective queues. So if you open up the Calamity Beach one, you can see that I've got the Madan drums, which have a sort of beachy feel. I've got a bass layer of strings and horns. which is really just there to sit as an undercurrent and act as a bass layer. The guitar to act as harmony. And then the kettle gongs to take the melody. Make sure that all of your WAVs are set to looping. So select all of those once you've imported them and click on looping. Next, we're going to connect those to a mixer node. So you drag off from the pin, and you want to select mixer. You can use the mixer node to adjust the levels of each element. 
with nothing selected, if you scroll down the details panel on the left hand side, until you see virtualization mode, and change this from restart to play when silent. That's going to keep everything synchronized so we can fade in and out and everything's going to stay in time. Once you finish that queue, copy and paste it for as many locations as you want, renaming each file and remember to change the WAVs. Check your levels in each one as well, so go through them and make sure that they all sound to be roughly the same level. This is something that we've already done in the audio application in Cubase here. It's always good to double check things when you're going through the process of creation. And if you test as you go, it means there's less testing to do at the end. What I've also done here is that I have this drums Cuban created. So I know from the way that my map is already set up that I'm going to have gaps between my zones. So what I've done is I've created a sixth sound cue called Cuban drums, and that's going to play whenever we're not in a zone so that there's still something rhythmic happening as the player moves around the map. Once you have your sound cues created, select them all and drag them into your third person character blueprint. With them all selected, scroll down the details panel on the right hand side and make sure that auto activate is unticked. And then on the left hand side, we're gonna create a dispatcher. So add event dispatcher, click on that. It's gonna give you an option to create a dispatcher. I've already created one here and I've named mine Audio Dispatcher. Next, we're going to create a variable called Music Array. So in the variable section, add variable. And we're going to call this, I've called my Music Array. So we're going to change the variable type to Audio Component. And we want the object reference, the light blue one. Next, click on this little icon to the right of that and we're going to change the container type to an array with the dots. I've already created one and I've called mine music array, so I'm going to delete this one. Next, we're going to click and drag this into the blueprint and it's set music array, like I have here. And then from that, I'm going to pull out and make array, which will get you this. You're going to click add pin for as many of the sounds that you've added to the third person character blueprint, just like I've got here. If it's important to you for the tracks to be in a certain order, then it's this that's gonna set the order. So I've made the SC drums Cuban, zero in my array, and that means I, I can remember easily what number that is when I want to find it. So once you've hooked those up, we're going to add a delay, but we're not gonna change the duration we're going to connect that to our call audio dispatcher. I'm using the delay because I'm using an event begin play node in a level blueprint as well. And I want that series of executions to run before I trigger the event dispatcher. There might be a nicer solution to this, but this works for our example. Let's compile and save that. Next, we're going to go into the level blueprint. And here you can see I've got this set up. I have the event begin play node. From there, I'm going to cast to the third person character. Let's bring it out. Third person character. Make sure context sensitive is ticked and it'll bring it up right there for you. The object, I'm going to pull out get player character. I'm going to select that one. Next, we're going to pull out from the as third person character. And we're going to call the event dispatcher that we created. So bind to uh, bind event to audio dispatcher and I'll pull it up like here and then connect those execution pins together. Next we're going to create a custom event so just right click on the blueprint and type in custom event I've just called mine audio hook the hollow red square in the corner of that custom event up to the red square in the bind event. That's gonna open a communication channel between the character and level blueprints. From the audio custom event, from that execution pin, add for each loop node. From the third person character, you want to get the music array, which will give you this node here. And we're gonna attach the output of that node to the array input on the for each loop node. From the array element pin, going to drag out and type in play. It's going to get us this node. 
connect those execution pins and that's basically going to start the play of every track that we've got within this array all the pieces that we added in our third person character blueprint next we're going to pull off from the array element and we're going to add a node to adjust the volume again connect the execution pins and we're going to set the volume to 0 0.001 this is only going to be audible to dogs living in wills, but it won't be audible to anybody who has their sound system set to a reasonable level. Again, from that music array, we're going to pull out, and we're going to add a get node, get a copy node. This is going to get one of the entries from our array, and in this case, I want to call the zero index, which was the Cuban drums. That's because I want that one to play all the way through with the other sounds being layered on top. Pull out from this and add an adjust volume node. And then I'm going to set the value there to 1. So this section here, these two nodes, are saying get the first track in the array and set the volume for that one to 1. We've already told it to play. So now when we start the game, we're instantly going to have the Cuban drums running in the background. Next, we're going to create a new blueprint by right clicking on the content browser blueprint class and then selecting actor and we're going to set up our blueprint like this one first we're going to add component and add a box collision you can choose a different shape if that's going to be more suitable for your level with that selected we're then going to change the box extent the, the size and shape of the box to 500 for the X and Y and 250 for the Z Next, we're going to add an integer variable component and call it select track. We're going to use this to specify which track we're going to play in this zone from the array that we made in the character blueprint. Click on the closed eye icon so that it becomes an open eye. This means that we can place the blueprint in the level and we can edit this particular variable independently. That allows us to have multiple versions of the same blueprint operating with different pieces of music in them. I've also added two float variables, fade in duration and fade out duration, so I can edit these for individual map sections, but you don't have to do that. If you do add those, I'm using 1.5 for both of them. Next, we're going to select the collision box. We're going to right click, make sure context sensitive is ticked. You go to add event for a collision box, collision, and we want add on component begin overlap, just like I have here. From the other actor pin, we're going to add an equals node, two equals. And into this one, we're going to connect the get player character. Again, just like I have it set up here. From this, we're going to add a branch node and connect that up to the begin overlap node. And if that's true, we're going to cast to the third person character. Again, hook that up to the get player character node. And from there, we're going to get our music array again. Remember, that was get music array. From that, we're going to get a copy. We're going to then hook up that integer variable we created called select track. And from there, run out from the get a copy node to the adjust volume node. And then what I've done for the adjust volume duration, I have added the fade in duration, just connected those up together and I'm setting the adjust volume level to one. Next, we're going to do the same again, but we're going to do it for when the player leaves the collision box. So select collision box again from the left-hand side, right click, context sensitive again ticked, add event, collision, add on component, end, overlap. And it's exactly the same setup, so you just copy and paste it in. The only difference is that you're going to put 0.001 for the volume level and if you're using the same node I am, you're putting the fade out duration node there for the volume duration. And that's it. We're all ready to place this in a level and see how it works. So I have a few already placed in this level. What I'm going to do is delete those and show you how we can set these up for the different areas that we've got. So I'm going to click on the template we've just made and drag it into our scene. I'm just going to adjust it so it generally fits the space I wanted to fill. So 
that's one in, that's Calamity Beach. Now if we go back to third person character, Calamity Beach was number five in that array. So with that blueprint still selected on the map screen, I'm going to select number five here in the select track. Next, I'm going to do the same again for the mountain forest. I'm going to click and drag that in there. Increase the height on that one a little bit so the player is definitely going to hit it. And go back to third person character and the mountain forest was number three on that one. So let's change that to three. Let's just test these two out. So first of all, I'm starting in a non-zoned area. So there we are. So we have the Cuban drums playing from the beginning with nothing else. If you walk along to Calamity Beach. We've got the music for that section and the mountain forest. So one's faded out, the other's faded in, and and everything's in time. So that's an introduction to using adaptive music in Unreal Engine. There's plenty more we can do, especially if we use all your middleware like FMOD or WISE, where we can use transitions, bridges, and apply effects more easily. Let me know how you found this tutorial in the comments below, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them here on my Reddit or on the Unreal Engine forums. Take care, and thanks for watching.